first yell to the last down. You're watching Aggie Game Day. We're less than 30 minutes from CBS Sports coverage of A&M in Alabama right here on KBTX. You're looking live at the fan zone through the lens of the RV Source fan cam. Gene Stallings went from the junction boy to head coach at Texas A&M pretty quickly. He was named head coach of the Aggies at the young age of 29. His record in seven seasons in Aggieland wasn't great, but the seven years he coached at Alabama were stellar. On the field, his teams picked up 70 wins, although some from the 1993 season were forfeited. His 1992 squad, though, won the national championship. And with more on the coach, here's Kathleen Witte. Daryl, there may not be a person alive with a better perspective on the two teams playing today than Gene Stallings. Even at the age of 80, he still leads a hectic life, but he was kind enough to find time to let Steve Fullhart come out to his ranch in East Texas. They talked about the two schools he led and his son, who may have been the biggest Bama fan of them all. If you could coach one more game, would you coach A&M or Alabama? Well, that's a good question. I won't say two more games. <laughs> When he's not on the road outside Little Powder League, Gene Stallings is keeping tabs on his hundreds of East Texas acres. If you wonder just how much this man has seen and done as he earned all this land, just step in his office. Most of this stuff is just junk, but it's it's important to me. This you call it junk, but I, I don't see how you could look at any of this or bring anybody in here to look at it and think, Man, this is junk, this is remarkable. Well, this is a life right here. You know, uh, now I've got the best badge collection in the world. I've got over 700 badges. Do you ever think, what did you do to deserve all of this? Well, you know, uh, uh, we live in America, and a guy that uh, uh, has ambition and he works hard and he's got a chance. I was at the right place at the right time. In size and scope, Texas A&M has changed a whole lot since Stallings roamed its sidelines as player and coach. But he can claim what so few could or can. He's led two teams with among the most passionate fans and prominent game day experiences. How can you get better than A&M? Cadet go marching in and everybody coming in early and tailgating and so forth. And I thought it was really the other one. Then you go to Alabama and uh, you just can't believe how many motor homes coming out, start coming in on Thursday and Friday. And they've won so many national championships. And it's not a whole lot to do in Alabama other than go to Alabama Auburn games. If you want to be accepted at Alabama, you need to win the national championship. If you want to be accepted at AM, you just need to win the conference there. There's a difference. My allegiance obviously is with AM. I went there, played there, was on the Board of Regents there. Uh, they treat me extremely well when I go to Alabama. My favorite picture is this one right here. Beyond wins, there's another big reason Stallings holds Alabama close to his heart. Alabama held his son close to theirs. This is my office there at Alabama. Johnny was asleep on oh, the couch. Wow. <laughs> and uh, every day he would come in from after work and my secretary would feed him and he would take a little nap right there. He would work over to Bryant Museum and, and do various things. And he would come over and he'd watch practice for a while and somebody would take him home. In 2008, John Mark Stallings went to his final home. His life on earth not defined by Down syndrome that he couldn't read or barely count, but by a spirit and friendship that lifted him and everyone around him. Head to the heart of Dixie. You'll find streets, facilities, football fields, even Alabama's equipment room named after him. Was there a bigger Alabama fan than Johnny? Well, uh, not to my knowledge. I mean, he, he would go to the games, obviously, and put on his headset and let's be like goal. And he knew what was happening. I mean, he obviously went to all the games, and uh, it was a joy to have him. The uh, saddest day of my life when he passed away, he's 46. He said he wouldn't live to be four and never make 11. Be for lots of people. What do you think about A&M? Did he think anything about A&M? Uh, he called it M&M, and uh, he was a little young when when uh, I was there, and, and he knew my association, obviously, with it. And he would watch him when he's on television. He could tell when their headgears. He could tell M&M was on television. He'd holler, Pop, Pop, M&M's on television. 
Among John Mark's last words were a reassurance to his dad, an Alabama fan, to an Aggie who still has lessons to share. When I was coaching, you know, if you were not a gifted player, I, I had plenty of talent for you. I, you could stay as long as you wanted to. But if you had talent, you better lay it on the line. But I've seen Johnny struggle to walk, struggle to talk, struggle to do various things, and yet here's somebody that's blessed with ability. I wanted to perform. Can you sing Yay Alabama? Go Alabama. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> game day wouldn't be complete without a look back in history. Cody's got the old Army Rewind still to come.